They come down in price now, uh, and this is, I'm talking residential here. And so I have this discussion with people uh, every week, you know, time and time again, and we still manage to, even though my view is that they're not particularly an economic choice, we still manage to sell probably about somewhere between 25 and 30% of the PV system to residential, we sell with batteries. And um, it's almost, despite trying to talk people out of it, they just want them. So I'm just going to share with you my thoughts about this and take, take from you know, what you will. So for me, the way I explain um, it to people is that there's basically four key values out of when putting batteries on grid. Solar cycling, so the price differential between a feed-in tariff and the peak rate. So if you're paying, being paid, I don't know, 10 cents on, uh, on exports by your retailer and you pay 30 cents for your peak rate at night, then putting energy into a battery and taking it out again in the evening is going to give you the difference. The value is the difference between the two. Um, so in that case, it might be 20 cents. Uh, the second one is arbitrage. So if your battery system is capable of um, gaming the time of use pricing schedule, so charging batteries from grid when the time when the price of electricity is cheap and discharging during peak period when it's expensive, then again, you get some more value. The third one being backup power in outages. So again, assuming your energy storage system is configured as the capability of backing up loads, what's that worth to you? So some customers around where I am, out in um, regional Australia, we have lots of outages regularly. Some areas I talk to people and they say, we have, uh, you know, eight to 10 outages a year, somewhere between five hours and you know, five days long. And for those people, the idea of a battery, uh, the main thing they're concerned about is will it back up my house? Um, and in those regional areas, often it's, you know, they can't get water out of a tap unless they've got electricity to drive the pump. So it's really meaningful and valuable to them. Whereas others, where you might have one blackout a year and it lasts half an hour, what's that worth to you? You're not going to spend thousands of dollars um, on batteries that you, know, you can just wait half an hour. And then the last one being the virtual power plant, VPP, um, which is effectively receiving some kind of financial reward for helping to stabilise the national grid. Of course, from an energy retailer's perspective, where they may have, I don't know, a thousand customers all with a battery in their garage and uh, the energy retailer is part of that VPP, sees the wholesale price of electricity go to $1,000 a megawatt hour and they say, great, time to press a button and discharge a 1,000 batteries. So they're getting, the reason you're going to get paid some credits is because they're going to make a squeeze out of your battery. Um, this is a really early stage market, but it's obviously going to develop and mature and hopefully we're going to see um, greater value coming to the consumer who's gone for the battery out of those VPPs. I think the sort of general view is that in Australia we, we've got at the moment those VPPs aren't paying enough. They're not attributing the value to the consumer that they perhaps deserve. Anyway, those are the things I talk about with customers. I say those are all the opportunities for you to get some value out of having a battery. Um, as I put in here, this is just my personal view, uh, and it's one psychological approach to, but for some reason, my, in my experience, this is how it's turned out for me. Uh, so if you don't like my approach, do the proper thing, use detailed financial analysis, and then show a customer that it's gonna take 15 years to pay for the battery <laughs> that has a warranty of 10 years. Because um, a lot of the time that's the kind numbers you get out of these models. So people say, are they worth it? Um, all of the economic analysis that you might do, whether it's back of the envelope stuff or, or using those financial models, are really gazing into the future because you're looking at what are the financial situation, what are the value, what is the value that's going to come over the life of that battery. And so, you know, it's known unknowns Unknown unknowns. How do we know what the price for a VPP you're going to get paid over the life of 10 years of battery? Who knows? Um, 
what is, do we know what the beating tariffs and peak rates are going to be in, you know, over, the, over the whole 10 year life of the battery? We don't, we're guessing. Um, you, know, you would think that feeding tariffs will probably drop because there'll be an oversupply in the market of electricity during the daylight hours. Um, who knows what peak rates will do, depends on the, you know, the stress on the network and whether grid storage gets in, introduced and all sorts of things. The time of use pricing differentials, what are they going to change? So it's all impossible to predict. So I say to people, look, who knows, uh, it'll probably pay for itself. They are probably worth it. And my guess is the payback period is probably going to be about eight years, but I could be completely wrong. Um, so I then basic pretty much the psychology is look, they're still quite expensive batteries, and uh, they're not for everyone, and we don't really know whether they'll pay for themselves. Um, so I basically talked them out of it and said, look, it's you know, the economics don't look fantastic. But then I just say to them, well, but they're really cool and we sell heaps of them. And then, so we just leave all the negatives behind, just leave it all there. You haven't told them any lies and you know, you've actually said what you think is probably likely. Uh, and you just leave it behind and say, well, okay, that's talked about it, but it's not kind of worth it. But then I'll show you about batteries because they're really cool things. Um, and so then my approach is, and it doesn't work for everybody, but it's basically show them the technology um, and specifically on a smartphone. So it doesn't matter what you know, equipment you're using, they've all got apps and you know, websites you can log into. To basically show them that you can be in control of your energy, you can see how much you're producing, where it's coming from, um, you know, it's, it's in the palm of your hand. And in some of these systems, there's actually, you know, you can have a control aspect, you can reprogram it to do these time of use, charging, you know, the arbitrage um, from the app itself. And usually, I actually try to hand the phone to the person so they can have a play with it, because sort of, it's, I think, there's some kind of psychological thing where when it comes into their hand, it's not me telling them what to do, they're, they're not having a play with it looking at the data and so I show them that, you know my system at home or customer or whatever we've got in the office and, um, and and then I just leave it and then we you know I we send out PV quotes with no, nothing to do with patterns but usually people will ring up those who are interested the, the sort of quarter to the third that are interested will ring up and say I know you talked me out of it but I'm really interested in that pattern can, can you send me a quote even though you told them they're too expensive and leave it alone. So anyway, this is my experience. Um, and I think that thing at hand specifically of going, you can be in control and give them your phone so they've got it, it's a kind of interesting thing. And I don't feel bad about it because I've told them the truth of what I think. And I do genuinely believe that, that, that there will be, there's a really good chance that you will actually get more value out of the battery inside of what you do. Just guessing what will happen with all those things and time of use charges, but it is a guess. Um, but I've been truthful with people and I've actually said to them, you know, this is what I think. And if they want to choose to go ahead and do it, if they have to install it as, as they do, then that's their decision, it's not mine. Whereas, of course, if it's commercial batteries, there's nothing emotional about that. You, you can't put that in your hand. So I put that in someone's hand and hope they'll make a decision. So, of course, in, in this case, the, predominant things is peak demand charge reductions. So if we're able to discharge, charge batteries and then discharge them at the time of peak loads in a, in a commercial electrical situation, then, then that will have a significant saving on um, their electricity bills. Uh, the potential for arbitrage, depending on the time of use pricing that they're on. Um, so charging when it's cheaper, discharging when it's more expensive. And backup power, during outages, but again, the, the um, in a commercial or industrial setting, it's highly likely you're only going to provide that backup for certain parts of that business. So you can isolate perhaps an office and communications and equipment circuits that are going to be backed up. Otherwise, the power rating uh, that could be required might be huge you know, for industrial processes or whatever. So 
just being aware of that, that you know you can segment on and create some value, but not expect to run the whole factory for hours upon hours. Um, and so in selling commercial batteries, then it's all about the numbers, there's no emotion. Um, and you know it's it's about doing some analysis, getting real low profiles. And so I mean, just as two examples, the two Australian uh, based PV analysis uh, piece of software, PVSL and Solar Plus, for that, that are able to look at those um, returns that are provided and changing ROI as a result of putting um, energy storage. So, just moving on. Um, also, a consideration if you're putting in energy storage into um, residential scenarios or anything for that matter, there's a consideration for power rating, startup currents and power factor and all these things versus as well as the energy component. So it's, it's not good enough to say you've got 10 kilowatt hours of, of energy if you can only deliver it at one kilowatt maximum. So know the products, know its limitations and therefore um, start uh, at a residential level. Um, make sure you start an early conversation with the consumers about what your product offering is going to do for them in terms of backup. This uh, table here is from one of the training providers with regards to uh, training for batteries on grid, the CC um, accreditation endorsement, battery endorsement. Uh, and so here, it's actually taking account of the power factor of the devices. So those appliances that are being run by the backup circuit may have a really poor power factor and therefore require, put more of a maximum, of maximum demand, more of a demand into that equation. So uh, you can do all those calculations and work all that stuff out, or you can follow the manufacturer's instructions. So they often have literally pictures and lists of the type of equipment that you can and cannot back up with their system. Um, so probably best to, to do both, do some calculations and you know, get to know your, your uh, product. So moving on from that, I'd like to introduce Victor 